The top stories tonight in Y News. House Speaker Martin Romualdez emphasizes the necessity for charter change or chacha as Congress resumed its session today. Task Force West Philippine Sea and the Philippine Coast Guard describe recent incident near Bajo de Mesimlok as most serious harassment by China against Filipino fishermen. The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, appeals to operators and drivers of unconsolidated traditional jeepneys to comply with Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program to avoid penalties. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suspends his 2024 presidential campaign and endorses former United States President Donald Trump. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 22nd of January, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Mariela Toza. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Marvi Delfin. First in the news, House Speaker Martin Romualdez reiterates the need for charter change or chacha as Congress resumes session today. Meanwhile, the House leadership denies accusation that he is behind the People's Initiative campaign. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. With 209 lawmakers present, a quorum is declared on the first session day of the House of Representatives for the year 2024 on Monday, January 22. Speaker Martin Romualdez reiterates the need for charter change for economic prosperity as Congress resumes session. It is critical that we facilitate the entry of foreign capital and direct investments into our economy, and it's an imperative that we re-examine the Constitution and carefully scrutinize pertinent economic provisions to eliminate the barriers that restrict potential growth. He also once again welcomed the Senate action to review the 1987 Constitution through the filing of resolution of both houses number no. 6, which proposes amendments to specific economic provision of the 1987 Constitution. Sa tulong ng Senado at lahat ng Pilipino naghahangad ng pagbabago, matutupad na rin ang pangarap natin na mabuksan ang ekonomiya para makapasok ang pondong kailangan sa paglikha ng mas maraming negosyo, trabaho at kabuhayan ng mga Pilipino. On the other hand, the House leader denied the accusations that he is behind the ongoing People's Initiative campaign. This comes after Senator Bato de la Rosa revealed that he received information alleging Speaker Romualdez ordered the lawmakers to gather signatures for the initiative. Sabi man nila sa'yo na, Boss, pasensya ka na, just following orders lang kami. May orders yung aming, uh, aming speaker. So, sunod lang kami sa order. No? Following orders lang daw sila. I don't know what he's talking about. He has not mentioned any focus on you. Various multi-sectoral groups gathered in front of the House of Representatives early today to protest Chacha. According to them, lawmakers must focus their attention on improving the lives of Filipinos instead of looking after the interests of foreigners. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, clarified it has a duty to accept signature forms over the proposed People's Initiative, though there is no formal petition yet filed before the poll body. Dante Amento tells us why. In a press statement, election lawyer attorney Romulo Macalintal argued that without a formal petition filed before the Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, it is premature to submit the signature sheets for the proposed People's Initiative to amend the 1987 Philippine Constitution, and no valid reason for the Commission to receive them. The signatures could not allegedly be filed before the petition. In response, Comelec Chief George Irwin Garcia explained it is their ministerial duty to accept the signatures' forms. 
Commonwealth Resolution No. 10650 promulgated last 2020 provides such a rule. Kung wala po sa rules yan, wala po sa guidelines, sapat naman namin tatanggapin yung dagdag trabaho sa amin. Kaya na po nasa guidelines yun and therefore hanggat hindi nababali wala yung guidelines, binabago o nasasabing uh, null and void, then kinakailang ipatupad po namin yung nakalagay sa guidelines namin. Garcia further said Kamalak local offices will issue certification upon the submission of the signatures which will be needed during the formal filing of the petition. Kailangan po nila yung Annex B, kailangan nila yung certification. So, ibig sabihin, sa akin palagay, kaya naman nailagay sa guidelines yun, para hindi dadalhin lahat dito sa Maynila, sa main office ng Comelec, yung siyam na, siyam na milyon o sampung milyong signatures. Meanwhile, the poll body clarified the proposed People's Initiative would not affect the date for the 2025 elections. However, the voter registration next month and the preparations for the upcoming elections would be affected. In preparation, definitely. Same, parehas po ng mga tao ang gagamitin namin. Parehas ang resources na gagamitin namin. And uh, uh, take note, yung po kasing mismong uh, preliminaries ng People's Initiative, wala naman po sa budget namin yan. The poll body disclosed Monday, January 22, about 900 cities and municipalities submitted signature forms to their local offices. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The National Bureau of Investigation, or NBI, revealed they have not received a request to in investigate the alleged bribery in gathering signatures for the proposed People's Initiative to amend the Constitution. NBI Director Medardo de Lemus said they would initiate the probe upon request or order for them. They allegedly want to veer away from political issues. Uh, wala pa naman kami natatanggap na mga ganyang uh, request or ask to investigate. But the NBI would like to veer away from issues or matters that would have some political undertones. We limit ourselves to criminal activities, pag mga ganun naman, not unless we receive a directive from higher authorities na uh, ayaw ng agency na makukulayan ng politika. Tensions rise once again in the South China Sea as Chinese Coast Guard forces reportedly harassed Filipino fishermen near Bajo de Mesonlok, also known as Scarborough Shoal. On January 12, an unsettling incident unfolded when five Chinese Coast Guard personnel approached Filipino fishermen who were collecting shellfish near the entrance of Bajo de Mesonlok. The Chinese forces allegedly held the fishermen through to the reef. Reports indicate that some Filipino fishermen were also pursued by Chinese Coast Guard personnel, marking a troubling escalation in the ongoing territorial disputes in the area. The Philippine Coast Guard describes this as the most serious harassment by China since the initiation of the Transparency Initiative last year. Under this initiative, the Philippine government began publicly disclosing instances of harassment by China. If our point of preference is when um, um, on the time that we started our Transparency Initiative last year, up to this time, because I can only speak on that duration since I uh, became the spokesperson for the West Philippines of the Coast Guard, uh, siguro ito yung pinakamatindi. We were able to um, identify naman kung sino ito uh, last uh, January 20. And uh, we approached yung person na nag-upload uh, nito and um, he was uh, kind enough naman to cooperate and also submit a uh, sworn statement no? uh, para patunayan na uh, yung inilabas niyang video na yon ay uh, talagang nangyari ng January 12. Adding to the tensions, the Chinese Coast Guard had previously installed a floating barrier at Bajo de Masinok, preventing fishermen from entering the reef. Now it seems that even being just outside the reef does not spare Filipino fishermen from harassment. This incident occurred just before meetings between the Department of Foreign Affairs and Chinese Foreign Affairs on January 17. The discussions aimed at reducing tensions in the West Philippine Sea and reinforcing communication mechanisms between the two nations. 
But for this uh, administration uh, under President Bongbong Marcos, and uh, uh, since we started the Transparency Initiative, this is um, uh, the most uh, serious, I guess, no, na, na experience natin. But uh, I wouldn't say it's it's not alarming. Uh, again, ang uh, naging participation lang naman ng Chinese Coast Guard dito is isang rubber boat at limang Chinese Coast Guard personnel. Ibig sabihin, um, it's not exclusive for the Chinese to say na silang may full sovereignty dito. Uh, but even the Filipino fishermen uh, also have our own rights no, uh, to allow our Filipino fishermen to fish in these areas. And for the news abroad, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis has stepped out of the United States presidential race to endorse former President Donald Trump, citing a lack of clear path to victory. The shock announcement came days after his poor performance in the Iowa caucuses, leaving Trump and former United Nations Ambassador Nikki Haley in this week's New Hampshire primary. DeSantis has pledged to support the Republican nominee, claiming that Trump is superior to current U.S. President Joe Biden and slamming Nikki Haley as repackaged form of warm over corporation. If we don't have a clear path to victory, accordingly, I am today suspending my campaign. Now, following our second place finish in Iowa, we've prayed and deliberated on the way forward. If there was anything I could do to produce a favorable outcome, more campaign stops, more interviews, I would do it. The governor gained national attention during the pandemic for rejecting federal advice and reopening Florida sooner than many other states. His anti-woke agenda also grabbed headlines which aims to prohibit educational institutions and businesses from teaching students and employees to feel guilt or any form of psychological distress due to their race, color, sex, or national origin. Former President Trump is reportedly delighted to receive an endorsement from a former rival. He believes that this endorsement will significantly boost his lead over another competitor, South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Before we begin, I'd like to take time to congratulate Ron DeSantis and, of course, a really terrific person who had gotten to know his wife, Casey, for having run a great campaign for president. He did. He ran a, a really good campaign, I will tell you. The recent winter storm in the United States has resulted in nearly 90 weather-related fatalities across various states in the past weeks. Among the casualties, 25 individuals lost their lives in Tennessee and 60 in Oregon, where a state of emergency remains in effect. Additional fatalities have been reported in states including Illinois, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Mississippi, Washington, Kentucky, and Wisconsin. The freezing weather and icy road conditions have left thousands without power, enduring the harsh cold temperatures. Residents are grappling with challenging circumstances as they navigate through this severe weather situation. Dino po ako pumasok sa work, gawa na may forecast na may snowstorm po. Usually 5 a.m. naalis na po ako sa bahay namin. Tingnan po po sa bintana, makapal na po yung snow. May kasama malakas na hangin. Lalo pong kumapal ng maaga dahil hindi pa po agad na flow yung snow. At dahilan po, nagkaka-power outage din po minsan. As U.S. meteorologists warned, the frigid climate is expected to persist throughout the week, posing a continued threat. There are concerns of potential flooding due to the melting ice as temperatures rise, especially in the Midwest region of the United States. Several municipalities in the Davao and Caraga regions have declared a state of calamity due to the continuous heavy rainfall experience there, leading to flooding and landslides last week. Nel Maribohok reports. 11 municipalities from the two regions in Mindanao have declared a state of calamity 
due to the devastation caused by the unceasing rainfall caused by the shear line last week. According to the Office of Civil Defense Spokesperson or OCD Director Edgar Posadas, more than 152,600 families or approximately 670,000 individuals have been affected by the floods. As, as we speak, we have uh, uh, 11 in fact, uh, na nagdeklara po ng state of calamity. Ito po ito sa uh, Davao region at uh, apat po sa Karaga. Director Posadas also confirmed casualties in the said regions. Pero unfortunately po ma'am, mayroon tayong uh, kinukumpirma na uh, labing anin po ng mga casualties. Uh, most dito ma'am, yung doon po sa Mount Biwata, yung last flight on Thursday sa Mongkayo. Uh, and then, uh, labing dalawa po doon, and then dalawa po sa Davao City, tapos isa po sa Davao uh, Oriental and Davao Occidental. The OCD along with other government agencies and local government units ensured aid to those affected by the ongoing rainfall caused by the shear line. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, is making an appeal to operators and drivers of unconsolidated traditional jeepneys. The plea encourages compliance with the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program to prevent the impounding of their vehicles and the imposition of higher fines. JP Nunez will tell us why. The Land Transportation Office, or LTO, emphasized the fines and penalties operators and drivers may face if they are apprehended operating a colorum vehicle. According to LTO Chief Assistant Secretary Vigor Mendoza, they may be imprisoned from 6 years up to 12 years. They may also pay a fine of up to 3 million pesos and their vehicles will be impounded. Starting February 1, the LTO will conduct an extensive operation to apprehend unconsolidated traditional jeepneys. As early as less than two weeks before the strict implementation of the Public Utility Vehicle Modernization Program, the LTO appeals to operators to comply with the program to avoid impounding of vehicles. Manghuli tayo, definitely. No? Uh, Manghuli tayo. Kaya ngayon pa lang, uh, kung may problema, ayusin na agad. Two weeks pa na. Oh, two weeks pa naman. Meanwhile, the LTO also considers shortage of public transportation when they strictly implement apprehension. ASEC Mendoza explained that their presence lessens the number of colorum vehicles plying on road. LTO presence pa lang sa Cubao. Nababawasan na kaagad yung mga sasakyan. Eh. Nakikita nila. No? So yung mga colorum na tumatakbo, hindi eh, mo na tumatakbo. Ang report sa amin, sa medyo ng medyo humaba ang pila ng mga pasero sa Cubao nung nag-implement ang uh, LTO ng enforcement drive hanggang gabi. In the previous statement of the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB and the Department of Transportation, they deny possible transport crisis. They said they will issue special permits to consolidated PUJ to cater passengers from routes of unconsolidated jeepneys. The LGUs will also provide libring sakay from their assets. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Senate Blue Ribbon Committee has a new chairperson. In the resumption of session today, Senate Majority Leader Joel Villanueva moved to elect Senator Pia Cayetano as the new head of the Senate panel. This follows the resignation of Senator Francis Tolentino from the post to focus on his re-election bid. Cayetano's election was lauded by the Senate Minority Bloc and other majority senators. She is the first female senator to hold the position. Minority applauds the decision of the majority, uh, Mr. President, and we congratulate our first ever uh, female chairperson of our yes. Senate Blue Ribbon Committee.
The Department of Health is keeping a vigilant eye on vector-borne diseases such as dengue during the El Nino phenomenon. Even in the midst of the dry season, the risk of dengue remains prevalent in the country. This is particularly concerning as some Filipinos faced with limited water supply resort to storing water. Gladys Tawabi details why. The World Health Organization reports that Philippines is among the countries which experienced high dengue cases in 1998. And the onset of El Nino was identified as a major contributing factor. As El Nino returns, Health Secretary Ted Herbosa is issuing a warning to the public about the potential resurgence of vector-borne diseases, such as dengue, particularly due to water storage practices. This precautionary measure aims to curb the risk of mosquito breeding during the dry spell associated with El Nino. El Nino year tayo at ang intensification is April and May according to the report of Pagasa. Madami tayong mga vector-borne illness na pwede mangyari. So, ang nangyayari, Secretary, doon sa mga lugar na mawawalan ng uh, supply ng tubig o mababawasan, mag-iigib po sila, mag -iibak. May mga ipong tim So, gusto nila yung malaking imbakan, usually mga drum yun, eh walang takip. So, yun ang doon mangingitlog po yung mga lamo, kaya maaaring tumas po yung dengue. Dengue symptoms including fever, pain behind the eyes, headache, rushes, muscle and joint pains, and vomiting have prompted health officials to advise individuals to promptly seek medical attention when experiencing any of these signs. In light of the anticipated challenges, the Department of Health is also urging hospitals across the country to be prepared. This includes having generator sets in place to ensure uninterrupted operations, especially during power outages. But uh, nag-promise ang DOE that they will up the ano, pero can never tell. So at risk ang hospitals. So pinapaprepare ko ang hospitals with their generator sets and probably framework agreements for renting of generators in case bumagsak ang power so that healthcare and services from the hospitals are continuous in the time of El Nino. Gladys Tuwabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, has announced to augment an additional 500 pesos to the monthly pension for senior citizens. This adjustment is set to benefit 4 million beneficiaries, providing them with increased financial support. However, it's important to note that not all eligible individuals have received the augmented pension at this time. Jed Neresina details why. There are some senior citizens who are still not receiving the monthly pension of 1,000 pesos. One of them is Edwin and Marietta who lived by the railway. Both of them are unemployed and they don't know how to get the said pension because people just told them to go to the DSWD and have an interview. The couple has a hard time because Edwin can't walk anymore while Marietta don't know how to commute. Gusto nila yung mga tao sinasabihan ako pa interview daw ako sa DSWD. Paano hindi ako makalakad? Yan ang problema ko. Simeon is also one of those who doesn't receive a pension. In his situation, he does not have the requirements needed by the barangay. That's why he postponed it even though it would have been a great help to him. Kasi sa akin, ang pananaw ko sa sarili ko, sayang isang araw ko eh, kahit laro ang daan ng araw ko eh. Kasi siyempre, malaking bagay po yun eh. Una, Kabuhayan. Siyempre, kain-kain. Ka, Araw-araw gagawin siya yun eh. Yun ang pinaka-una kong ano. Siyempre, kapag makakatanggap ako, ang una talaga, kabuhayan. Bibili ko ng kabuhayan. Matitira yun ang magagasis ko. As for Mang Reynaldo, who receives the said pension, it is better that it would be given every month for his daily expenses and medicine. Ganda yung monthly. Parang naiipon eh. Pa pa 500. Kaya dalawang buwan, dalawang buwan, 2,000. Yung nakukuha ka agad, na, 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 yung baga sa ano, kung kailangan, na, na ibibili, nakakabili. Tulad nito, kailangan makabili ako ng damo, pangangailangan ko.
According to Attorney Franklin Quijano, Chairperson of National Commission of Senior Citizens, the Department of Social Welfare and Development is the one distributing it to the beneficiaries. Indigent or the ones who have not received any help from their retirement, SSS, GSIS and others are eligible to receive a monthly pension of 1,000 pesos. Judd Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. In the latest developments in the Middle East, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu firmly states that he will not entertain any demands from the Hamas to end the conflict and release hostages in Gaza. Despite expressing a desire to bring an end to the hostilities, Netanyahu maintains that he will not release Palestinian prisoners. According to the Israeli Prime Minister, agreeing to such conditions would undermine the efforts of their military and uh, could jeopardize the safety of their citizens. The situation in Gaza remains dire, with over 25,000 casualties reported since Israel launched its military campaign against the Hamas militant group. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has once again rejected the possibility of a Palestinian state. Meanwhile, the United States and Israel hold differing views on a two-state solution, as indicated by the White House. The Israeli offensive was initiated in response to the October 7 attack by Hamas, resulting in significant casualties and the capture of over 240 individuals in southern Israel. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. Amid the challenges posed by the recent diarrhea outbreak in Bagu City, there emerges a silver lining, a renewed commitment to ensuring the safety of the city's water supply. In response to the outbreak, the Bagu Local Government Unit is taking proactive measures to tighten safety regulations governing water delivery services. Grace Flores will tell us the details. A day after declaring the diarrhea outbreak over on January 18, 2024, Mayor Benjamin Magalong directed the creation of a safe drinking water task force to implement immediate measures to address the source of contamination, which is the unsafe water coming from deep wells and bulk water delivery companies. During the post-outbreak meeting on January 19, immediate measures were identified, including the regular conduct of random water sampling of all water delivery companies, as well as the inspection of their facilities, storage, delivery trucks, hosts, among others, and the imposition of the requirement of these companies to maintain ledgers of their clients. That's the reason why we're shifting to the investigation to determine your culpability and mm -hmm. liability among itong mga water delivery services who we believe, who suspected, na saan sa kanila galing. Right. No? So it's big investigation namin. At the same time, we will be coming up with stringent measures methodologies, parameters, mm -hmm. mas strict to ngayon para sigurado tayo na highly compliant sila sa health standards. Based on the results of the epidemiological investigations conducted by the Baguio City Health Services Office and the Department of Health Epidemiology Bureau, the probable cause of the widespread diarrhea cases in the city from December 26, 2023 to January 8, 2024 was norovirus, but without ruling out bacterial causes as test results remain pending as of press time. The probable source of chains of transmission identified were contaminated water from the private deep wells and bulk water delivery companies. Water delivery companies with positive findings had already been ordered to cease operations and undertake intensive cleanup and disinfection and retesting before reoperating. Itong nangyari sa atin, there are a lot of learnings in the same manner na may mga silver linings dito. Dami silver linings. One is, nakita natin na kailangan pala natin baguhin yung ating sanitation code and probably come up with a separate safe water ordinance. Another is, kailangan pa palang natin mag-implement talaga ng more stringent na mga, one, na mga policies to ensure na talagang compliant sila sa standards. The mayor, however, said the city is looking into imposing sanctions against them. 
The city will also publish the list of accredited water delivery companies as a safeguard against the colorum and untested ones. Efforts will be pulled for the improvement of the water regulation section of the city environment code and the adoption of a safe water ordinance and the strengthening of the existing committees relating to water regulations. The diarrhea outbreak was declared on January 10, 2024 after a surge in cases started on December 26 peak on January 1 to 7. After safety measures were adopted by the city, the downtrend in cases which started on January 8 was sustained with an 80% decrease or from a total of 1,620 cases to just 300 cases in the past seven days. Grace Doctolero, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Arkasang Bahay. As the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity from Monday to Friday, 9.30 p.m. Philippine time through the social media accounts of the Members Church of God International. And before we close, we will leave you with the word giving glory to God. From the book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 16, it says, A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covereth shame. And those are the reasons behind the news January 20, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Marvi Delfin, live from Australia. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza, live from Australia. We serve the people, we give glory to God.